Hi everyone, welcome back to Digital Dreambox. Today we're continuing on with the third part of our retro gas pump modeling series. So let's not waste any time and jump right in. All right, let's model some more of this gas pump cabinet. I'm going to bring the images, our references over here, and we're going to work on the display, so the fuel display. And I've noticed in these old style gas pumps, you had three rows of numbers, the top being the fuel amount, the middle being um, how many gallons you had of gas or how the amount of um, gas you bought. And then the last one, which is a smaller readout, will be the price of the gas. And on some of them, it's also like a, a 3D readout as well. So we'll take that into account. Let's move this back over here. And what we'll do is we'll add a cylinder into the scene. So click on your cylinder, press W to go into your move tool. I'm gonna bring it out here. And then what I want to do is rotate this. So I'm going to press E to go into rotate, hold down J, and then that enables snap, and we can rotate it 90 degrees. Next, I'm going to press T on the keyboard. I'm going to drop the subdivisions down to about 10. And I only want like three faces, right, um, in the front and the ones on the side as well, um, because in case it protrudes a little bit. Let's um, go into face mode. So holding down the right mouse button, choose face. I'm going to box select these faces. And then I'm going to hold down shift. Actually, I may have grabbed one I didn't want. There we go. I'm going to hold down shift, do another box select, and that will unselect the front ones and select the other ones. Then we can delete those. All right, let's go into object mode. We'll scale this uh, in a little bit. Scale it down a bit and let's center that pivot as well. Press W to go into your move tool, and we have this plane here. It moves it in two axes, so we can just grab it, move it close to the front of the display, pressing F to frame in again, and let's scale this down. All right, um, before we do anything else, I'm just gonna move it out for a bit. Um, right now, these vertices are sticking pretty far over here. I'm just gonna move them in a bit so that they don't take up unnecessary UV space. we go something like that can work let's go back into object mode and now let's uh, push this in and then let's scale it down as well all right I think that looks pretty good we have to leave enough room for some text to show what these numbers mean all right now we need um, obviously more of these, right? So instead of making a regular duplicate, we're going to make an instance in a second. But first, let's um, measure the distance that we want between these. So open up your channel box right here. We have our um, trans or sorry, our um, positions, right? Let's freeze those transformations. And then I'm going to make a regular duplicate first, Control D. And I'm going to move this over roughly to where I want the number. It's right now at 0.13. I think that works for us, actually. So let's use those values. Let's delete this object again. Select our first one and go up to Edit, Duplicate Special. Open up that option box. And here, I'm just going to reset this. Instead of copy, we're going to make an instance. And then for translate, we'll do 0.13. And for number of copies, choose two. Click Duplicate Special, and now we have three of these. And the difference between these and a regular duplicate is that if you select any of these, um, let's go into maybe vertex mode, right? Um, also, if you're hovered over another mesh and you go into the component modes, it'll select the vertices of that mesh. We don't really want that. So let's select our object again, go into vertex mode, and we'll grab these vertices here and you'll see that if I grab these ones, the other ones get grabbed as well. So they share um, those properties. All right. And later on, when we UV unwrap it, we only have to do it once. All right. Let's um, go into object mode again. I'm going to open up the outliner. And what I want to do is grab these three. And I want to make another uh, duplicate, but I don't want to um, do it just yet. I want to move these to the center, but I can't combine it because I'll lose that instance effect, right? But however, but however, however, I can press Control G to group it, press W to go to my move tool, but my move tool is down here. Let's just center it. 
and then I'm going to hold down V, drag this arrow over, and wherever my mouse cursor is hovered over, right, it'll move to that um, aligned vertex on this arrow, right, this axis. All right, that's perfect. And then we just want to move this maybe into position. And now let's select these three, go edit, open up that duplicate special again. And we want to reset the X um, axis. We don't, want, we don't need to move it. And for number of copies, we only want one. Click duplicate special and we can move this down. Perfect. I think right here is probably good for this one. And then we can press G to repeat, right? And we can move this one down to here. And the bottom readout is usually smaller than the top. So let's scale this down a little bit. And I think that looks pretty good like that. There we go. All right. And now for the display, um, we could go further and we could add um, edge loops in here, create um, some type of extrusion, right? Push some faces in and make it look like they're sitting in something. But later on, I think we can fake it with a, an alpha, right? So we'll leave that alone. Let's work on the top piece next. Um, so over here, we have this section, which houses the sign. So we'll make this and we'll make the sign as well. All right, let's add a cylinder into the scene. I'm gonna bring this up and just gonna frame in on it. I'm gonna close the channel box again and the outliner. And what I wanna do is give this the amount of subdivisions I want. So whenever you add an object that already have a lot of subdivisions, such as a cylinder, right? Um, you want to just adjust it if you want, uh, if you need to, right? I'm going to press T on the keyboard and drop this down to maybe 14. I think 14 is plenty to balance out with the rest of the look. And then what I want to do is delete these bottom faces. So let's go into face mode, holding down the right mouse button, choose face. I'm going to hold down the tab key and just do a drag select and then delete those. Perfect. Let's go back into object mode, scale this down to roughly what we want. And let's move it down into position. Maybe scale it down a bit more. And then I'm going to push it a little bit inside the mesh. Not too far because remember, um, we want to take into account um, UV space, how much this occupies. Right. All right. I think that looks pretty good. Let's grab these uh, top vertices. So go into vertex mode, box select those ones, and push this down. It's about right here. I think that's fine right there. And what I want to do now is grab those top faces. So go into face mode, same thing. Hold down tab, do a drag select, and then let's offset this. So hold down shift, the right mouse button, mouse button, <laughs> and click extrude. All right, and let's give this an offset. And if this moves too quick for you, just gonna do that. Hold down sh uh, Control and Shift and drag, and that'll move it uh, with more precision. There we go. Sometimes I say Shift when I mean to say Control, right? Um, control will move it um, less quickly, and Control and Shift will move it um, even more precise. All right, there we go. Let's press G to repeat and bring this up to here. And then what we wanna do is maybe just delete those top faces because we don't need those. Perfect. All right, let's add another cylinder into the scene. So go into your um, object mode. What we'll do is we'll grab the cylinder, press W to go into your move tool. It's down here. And then we'll just move it up here. And again with this one, right? We just wanna give this the number we need, but first let's rotate it. Press E on the keyboard, hold down J, and we'll rotate it 90 degrees. There we go. And then we'll scale it in a bit. And these tend to be fairly big on some of these references. Let me just show you. So some of them can be quite big. So let's just scale it up a bit and scale it in a bit as well. Just gonna push it down till it's basically sitting in there. And then this will be our sign. Let's bevel these two edges. Um, 
Actually, I did mention, let's give this the subdivisions it needs. Press T on the keyboard to bring up the polycylinder window again. And for this, I think, let's just drop it. You can give yours the mount you want, but I'm gonna go with maybe 18 is a good amount, right? Has the rounding I need and it's pretty efficient, right? All right, now let's bevel the those edges. Go hold down the right mouse button, choose edge. I'm gonna click on that one, double click, hold down shift, double click this one, and then um, hold down shift, right mouse button, and bevel. There we go. I can play with the fraction, but I think 0.5 is fine for that. All right, I'm gonna go back into object mode, and how are we doing for time? Not too bad. Um, next, what I wanna do is make this piece over here where the gas comes out of, the, the hose connects, and the gas comes out of, comes out of. Okay, might be losing my voice. Just gonna add a cube into the scene, move it over here, and then what I'm going to do is just scale that down and just move it roughly into place for now. And I think that looks pretty good right there. Right, and this will be our little rain guard. Um, what I wanna do next is delete a couple faces. So I'm gonna hold down the right mouse button, go into face mode, select this one, hold down shift, select that one, and press delete. And we have this piece here. Let's go into object mode. What I'm gonna do is press the three on the keyboard and then maybe give this some supporting edges. So this is just a preview of what it looks like if we smooth it, right? So let's hold down shift, the right mouse button, go grab our multi-cut tool. I'm gonna put a cut right about maybe here and here as well. That creates a nice shape. Let's press one on the keyboard again. Press Q to go back to your select tool. I want this top edge, so let's select that one. And then what we wanna do is press three again, and let's move this edge. There we go. Just give it a little more of shape. All right, press one on the keyboard again. So we have this object, and let's give this an actual smooth. So I'm gonna go hold down the right mouse button, go object mode, hold down shift, right mouse button, and smooth. So our preview is to two levels, but when you do a smooth, it's down to, it smooths it to one level, and that's really all I need for this, right? Um, and I'm also actually going to delete a couple edges. So let's go into edge mode, and I'm going to double click this edge, hold down shift, double click this one, and hold down control and press delete. There we go. And you can see that the shape didn't change too much. All right, and let's take a look at our object again. And if I were to um, press three to preview this, you can see that the shape doesn't change that much. And the reason that why that is good is that if we bake a high poly onto this, right, you want the forms of the two to match pretty close. That's pretty important, right? Um, let's select our object though and isolate it. And what I'm going to do is um, grab this bottom edge loop. So let's go into edge mode. What I'm going to do is box select these edges, hold down shift and box select those ones so that I just have the bottom ones. And now let's um, extrude that. Hold down shift, the right mouse button, extrude. And here we just wanna adjust the thickness. You can see how fast that moved, right? So I'm just holding down uh, shift and control, dragging this. And now what I wanna do is um, afterwards, we're going to circularize these components and it's nice to have some quads or like an even number of um, quads. And so at the top here, we can actually turn this into a quad. So I'll show you what it looks like. Let's go into vertex mode. Um, box select those two vertices, hold down shift, right mouse button, merge vertices, merge to center. And then we can just box select these ones, press G to repeat, same thing here, G to repeat, G to repeat. And then if you look up here, if we delete these two edges, right? I'm gonna hold down control, press delete. We have a quad up here, perfect. And if we want to, we could even straighten that um, vertex, right? Grab this vertex, go into your move tool, hold down V, and then just snap to here. All right, um, let's 
um, circularize this section, but before we do that, we need to extrude it. So offset it. Hold down the right mouse button, go to face mode, grab those four faces, right? And if you um, circularize four faces, you'll get six sides, which is the look I'm going for, right? So, so let's um, hold down shift, the right mouse button, extrude, right? And here we just want to give it um, an offset. The size of the offset doesn't really matter too much because we're going to be circularizing this, right? So now let's hold down shift, the right mouse button, and circularize components. And for me, it made this straight, which is perfect. However, sometimes you'll need to adjust the twist, right? But I'm just going to undo that because for me it was fine. And now we can adjust the radial offset as well. So um, this can be pretty strong if you just drag it normally, right? I'm just going to undo that. Uh, you'll need to probably hold down uh, Control and Shift and adjust this. I'm just going to make the make it a bit smaller. There we go. And then what I want to do is, um, actually, that's a little too small. Let's increase the size of that a bit. And then I'm going to extrude that. Hold down Shift, the right mouse button, extrude. I'm going to bring this down to about right here. I'm going to press G to repeat. Then I'm going to drag this offset in the opposite direction, so the negative direction. Press G to repeat again and bring this down. Right. There we go, just some hardware to connect it. And then let's go into object mode. Let's unisolate our object. Go into your move tool. We just want to bring this back over here somewhere. Um, some of these pieces connect higher up and some connect lower. It really depends on the look you're going for, right? Um, but I think in terms of size, I might actually make this a little bit smaller and then um, just push it in roughly in here for now. Perfect. All right. Um, time wise, we didn't do too bad, but I think we'll wrap up this um, episode. So before we go though, let's um, save it. So go up to File, Increment and Save. And then um, we will see you in the next one when we'll try and finish modeling our uh, gas pump. See you guys then.